In these uncertain times, we often look for people to call family. We search for a place to feel safe and less alone, and we seek to belong. Well, here at the Riverside United Methodist Church, there is a place just for you. God has established us here to freely share with you His divine love and His blessed hope regardless of who you are. It is our pleasure to invite you in and welcome you to an oasis of love. And if you're looking for a church home, you have definitely found one. Welcome to the Riverside United Methodist Church where we are an oasis of love. Today is Ash Wednesday. It is a day where we are focused. We're focused on our transgression, focused on our shortcomings, focused on our mortality. There are signs that help us to be faced with these things. Signs such as sackcloth, signs such as ashes. We are grateful for a team of, at our church that has uh, so graciously prepared these uh, Ash Wednesday packets for us to celebrate Ash Wednesday even in our homes. Today as we take part in the sackcloth and ashes of this service, there is included inside of your packet a brief explanation of Ash Wednesday as well as a prayer. I encourage you all to take part in this time, in, in this prayer, uh, as you impose the ashes uh, upon yourselves. You can either take in, in, uh, mix a, a little olive oil uh, with your ashes um, to, so that they can be smeared upon your forehead as a sign that from the ashes we have come, uh, from the dust we have come, and from dust we shall return. I focus your attention now on the Old Testament book of Joel. Joel chapter 2, we will read verses 12 through 17. That is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love. He is eager to relent and not punish. Who knows? Perhaps he will give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of a curse. Perhaps you will be able to offer grain and wine to the Lord your God as before. Blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn meeting. Gather all the people, the elders, the children, and even the babies. Call the bridegroom from his quarters and the bride from her private room. Let the priests who minister to the Lord's pre in the Lord's presence stand and weep between the entry room to the temple and the altar. Let them pray. Spare your people, Lord. Don't let your special possession become an object of mockery. Don't let them become a joke for unbelieving foreigners who say, has the God of Israel left them? Brothers and sisters, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Satan did 
is the time. Now is the time for what? It is a time for us to become serious. To become serious about our relationship with God. Serious about being a devoted disciple of and for the Lord Jesus. Serious about our lights shining before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Now is the time. There is a story told about a man who had a Krispy Kreme donut shop located on his route to work. He was morbidly obese. He was challenged by his physicians that he needed to lose weight and gave him the formula for how to do it. A part of that formula was that he needed to avoid his habit of buying a dozen of Krispy Kreme donuts each morning. Fresh from his doctor's appointment, on his way to work, sure enough, he passes the Krispy Kreme donut shop. As he does, he is drawn to the parking lot. And he prays a prayer. He says, God, if you don't want me to have Krispy Kreme donuts, you won't allow me to get a parking space by the front door. The man circled the parking lot some 12 times. And sure enough, there was a parking space that opened up by the front door, and he said, God, I knew you wouldn't let me down. He was not serious about losing weight. He was not serious about his progress. He was not serious about his health. Brothers and sisters, many of us approach our lives just that way. We fail to realize that now is the time. This is, not about, about, uh, this is not a time to play games. This is not a time to circle the parking lot of our spiritual lives in disrespect to God's will and design for our lives. That is what the Lord, that is why the Lord says, he says, turn to me now while there is time. There is judgment that was coming for God's people, but the message was clear. That the Lord would rather, he would prefer for them to escape his judgment by recognizing that now is the time to make the change. Now is the time to make the necessary adjustments in their lives to be better than who and what they are. Turn to me now. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. With sackcloth and ashes, with a focus on our mortality of focus, 
on our spiritual development. Now is the time. Something that is glaring in this passage is the focus on prayer. Not just us praying for ourselves, but us praying with and for each other. The, the prayer is simple. Lord, spare your people. Spare your people. Don't let them, your special possession, become an object of mockery, Lord. Don't let them become a joke for unbelieving foreigners who say, has the Lord, the God of Israel, left them? Sometimes we all feel that way. Sometimes we feel that hope is lost, that help is non-existent, that we are trapped in this life and we are alone. But now is the time to realize, no, our God has not left us. He has given us a way of escape. He has given us hope for a better and a brighter day. I suppose what I'm suggesting to you is that now is the time for us to deprive our mortal bodies for the development of our spiritual man. During this time, the season of Lent, as we willingly fast and give up things, not just food, but other things that are very dear to us, may we do so as a sign, a sign to God that we can have everything in this life, but everything means nothing without God. May we be developed. Now is the time to do it. Shall we pray? Merciful God, we have lived a year of Lent in the midst of it all, we have seen love shine through. It has shined through at times, but as we look back in this moment, it feels like a year of shattered dreams and shattered peace. We are discouraged, even though so much feels out of our control. We also see the ways our own faults and failures to love each other fully, to care for the least, to honor your creation, to stand for what is right and good. These things have contributed to the shattering. And so we come to you in pieces, fragments, broken shells of our past selves. As we walk along the shores of uncertainty and pain, we ask that you meet us here. O oh, healer, help us. Show us our strength. Forgive our inertia and move us to move one step at a time toward greater care. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. In the name of Christ, your Son, amen. Through these days of 
In these uncertain times, we often look for people to call family. We search for a place to feel safe and less alone, and we seek to belong. Well, here at the Riverside United Methodist Church, there is a place just for you. God has established us here to freely share with you His divine love and His blessed hope regardless of who you are. It is our pleasure to invite you in and welcome you to an oasis of love. And if you're looking for a church home, you have definitely found one. 